I have been in the company since day one. And I know that in order for me to get more out of this, I got to do more. And actually, I've got to become more. And I know that I've been so product driven all these years because I, my background is nutrition and herbology. And I think it actually, I don't think it got in my way as we launched the company, but I think it got in my way after we had launched the company and we began to grow because I was suffering from uh, hung up upness, if that's actually a word. And I was hung up on the ingredients and trying to help people lose weight and feel better and live well and all these things. And I knew that I was not going to make it to Bora Bora uh, at the rate I was going. So I reached out to Steve and reached out to Mark. And I just kind of had to admit that I was at fault and I need some help. Take me up there. And so my plan right now, I'll let everybody know, is I plan on qualifying for Bora Bora uh, April and May. And with that momentum, June is going to be incredible. Not like any other summer we've ever gone through. I promise you that. You can see it coming. And then I'd like to, by the end of July, actually hit gold executive. So that's my plan. And that's what I have to do. And I invited these two guys to come in and show us uh, how we can all do that. But I wanted to show you that you cannot duplicate what I have done. It would be next to impossible. I'm 71 years old. And I have studied nutrition almost all of my life. You're not going to catch up. You can learn more, but you're not going to catch up. You cannot duplicate what I have done. And if you try, it'll get in the way of the business. Another great example is Mike and Teresa Dennison. She is a registered nurse, retired. Congratulations. But uh, you can't duplicate what she does. She knows how to keep people well and help them heal and all of that. You cannot get what you cannot duplicate what she does. And you darn sure can't duplicate what Mike does. This guy is like a computer guru. He, he taught, he, he is off the chart. I, it would take me a lifetime to learn what he knows. You cannot duplicate that. And we're going to get into that. So I brought Steve on to teach us how to become a leader and teach us some skills. Morning, Gary. Is it morning? Did you just wake up? I'm mute. <laughs> He's muted. I love this guy. And there you go. Okay. I, if I can figure it out, anybody can, right? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here, Gary. I was just getting ready to use you for an example because you guys, <clears throat> you can't duplicate what Gary's done either. A chemistry teacher, worked for major pharmaceutical companies. His focus has always been the products. And Gary and I and Mike have gotten together and we realized that you can't duplicate what we've done. We need a, a, a simple, easy simple, easy system. And that's what we're going to get today, you guys. So uh, thank you all for being here. And, and Steve, I'm just going to flip the microphone over to you. Okay. Well, I am just excited to see all of you and see your smiling faces again. This is so fun. And it's really fun to be here with Mark Walker. Um, what Stan has asked us to do, Mark and I actually had a little tag team opportunity a couple of times. So um, this should be fun. And there is so much, I think some of you may know, I've been really focusing on leadership development and training on that. But I have found that when I talk about leadership with people, and a lot of times the questions they ask is, hey, I have a team, how do I lead my team and help you know, inspire them and keep them working because some people get tired or stop working. A lot of those things are what people wanna talk about. But as I've kept drilling down, I came to this realization as I've worked with different leaders and Stan and I had this conversation, so he, has asked me to focus on this specifically. And I only have about an hour and then um, I'll kick it over to Mark. But for, for that hour, however long it takes in that hour for us to talk, it, it, I have found that when you have leadership, if you're not leading on the right path, you could be leading and being an awesome leader and doing all the right things. But if you're leading down this path, but you should be leading this path, it's not very effective. You're a great leader, but you're still not achieving the result that you're trying to get. Because ultimately leadership's to get a result. And all of you, I'm sure, are striving to continue to hit your goals and grow your businesses, achieve new ranks and, and accomplish those dreams that you're about, right? I mean, that's ultimately why you're here. You're spending time today because you keep wanting to know and learn and grow and grow your business and have those goals. And so when Stan and I talked a little bit about this opportunity, I suggested, I said, well, Stan, and Stan, I'm recording this, by the way, just in case it's, it's on your account, so you have it. Um, Thank let, you. Let's zero in 
on some things that I have found that have been very helpful to be the foundation for your leadership. So let me share my screen. Um, can you all see that? Yes. So as I have been out to training, first thing you need to know that my fundamental drive and passion is this unleashing you and your team and all of your organization. But I'm gonna to focus today on this foundational team, some principles that affect how you lead your team. And then Mark's gonna come in with some amazing things. I'm sure he's got some adjustments, but what I've seen him do is really go deep and powerful of how your Zingular business has something very special in its compensation plan and how it's designed to truly unleash some greatness within your team. So to go right into it, I focus on principles. I teach a lot about principles. There's tactics and things that people are always learning, but I zero in and said, if you can see and understand a principle which guides decision-making, it guides belief, it guides actions, it guides all of those things. If you can see some fundamental principles, then when you're making decisions about how to spend your time and what will happen to grow your business, it becomes a lot more easy. Because I've, as I've worked with different leaders, they have all these things they need to do and they hear all these things. And they're like, where do I go first? I'm like, well, look through this lens of a principle and then start to make a decision. So I'm gonna share with you some fundamental principles that are a foundation for leading a great team in a direct selling business. Okay, so focusing on leadership of teams. So this is the literal workshop. If Mark and I, all of us are in a room, this is exactly what we would be talking about. And so I'm gonna kind of throw a lot out at you at first, but of course, if you have some questions, raise your hand or maybe put it in the chat and stand if you can monitor the chat for me because I may not see it, you know, you can interrupt me and we can go from there because we want this to be something of great value for your time today. So if you're leading a team, if you think about it, if there is even a team, there must also be a game that that team is playing. This is what I was saying earlier about how the team is being led. Well, you got to understand that game. So how this works to truly be an effective leader, you got to first know the game you're in, master that game, and then fundamentally, how do I know if I'm winning the game? And I'll give you a hint. It is not based off of your check. The check is something and how much dollars and how much QV, that's important but there is another measure that you need to see to know whether you're winning in this game because the game you're in is in network marketing or direct selling or whatever phrase you wanna call it, right? That's the game. So I wanna talk that through to help you know it and where I'm headed is the principles behind the game that then help you be a more effective leader to guide people in winning their game. That's what they want from you as a leader. So first question I would ask, in fact, look at the question, what business are you in? And I am going to ask that. Um, Ray, just because I know you'll forgive me for calling on you. If I, if you were in an elevator and I just, you know, we're just getting to know each other and, and you say, oh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. I said, oh, what business are you in? How would you answer? I think you're on mute. You're on. Okay. okay. I think you unmuted me. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I would probably say, well, I'm in the health and wellness business and uh, I help people change lives. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, Christy, same question. If, what business are you in? We're in an elevator, we're getting to know each other. What business are you in? I am in the business of changing and empowering lives. I love that, okay. One more, Teresa. What is, how would you answer the question? What business are you in if you and I met for the first time? Um, this is where I need some help, honestly. But usually what I say is I'm okay. in the health and wellness business. <laughs> health and wellness business, all right. Okay, so this is great. And that is a, it's a correct answer, okay? I'm not tricking you, it's a correct answer. What I'm trying to show you though, is to help you, the first reaction of what you're saying kind of sets your mindset of what type of business you're in as an entrepreneur. And I'm trying to show you from a lens of knowing your game, this is this part, knowing your game, that I would say you're in the micro franchising business. That's the business you're in. And here's the definition of a micro franchise from Google. If you Google define micro franchise, this is what it says a small business that can easily be replicated by following proven marketing and operational concepts. 
Does that sound like the business you're in when you think about network marketing? Because remember, that's your game. Now I want you to really know the game, which is duplicating and proving and doing this, right? So as a business owner, as a business entrepreneur, fundamentally, you are in the business of micro franchising. Now you have a franchise and you sell health and wellness products. So all of your answers was correct. All I'm doing is making sure the game that you're in is that you are someone that actually has the ability to create micro franchises. So you all know this franchise, right? It's all over the world and they sell hamburgers everywhere, but those hamburgers and individual franchises are sold on every corner, but you are like McDonald's corporate. In other words, they make their money and they get big by putting as many McDonald's on as many corners around the world as they can. And the more franchises they open selling hamburgers, the more money that franchisor McDonald's makes and is able to have way more influence. So they know that ultimately their business is, my, is franchising that sells a great hamburger, but franchising is how they win. And you, what's so cool about what you have in network marketing is you have an unlimited license, depending on where Zingular is open, to establish franchises everywhere. As many people are willing to, to be a business partner with you, you can establish these franchises. So that's why I'm reinforcing, you have to think in terms of that positioning to know the game you're in, that that's your game. And of course the franchise has to produce great hamburgers and McZingler is the best products in the world. We all know that. So you have the best products, but oftentimes when I ask that question, I'm trying to get people to see that if you don't realize that you're first a brand micro franchiser and second, you sell those products, we tend to default and position ourselves mostly as a product seller versus a franchise seller. Let me give you one more thing here because this is causing a problem here on my screen. I happened to um, look up McDonald's on the stock market the other day, I asked Siri, I said, Siri, what's its stock price? And it was at $230 a share. And then I asked Siri to tell me the market value. So take the stock price times this number of shares outstanding, tells you the value of a company like this that has a great franchise model around the world, $172 billion. That is a valuable company with a lot of profit because they understand and are very good at their core business, which is franchising. And those franchises produce very, very good hamburgers and all those services. All right, I'm gonna stop for a second. Any thoughts or comments about what I'm saying? I'm sure you've heard this before, but in context of what we're doing today, trying to help you grow your business, any thoughts or comments or questions? Stan, and you're welcome to jump in and tag team with me, man. Well, it kind of put me in my place because that my answer was going to be networking. And you're just thinking so much bigger than what I was thinking. And that's what I have to get in the flow of is thinking bigger. And even when I was featured on Momentum Magazine, that was my topic was thinking big. And then here I am thinking small. Well, networking is a key skill. But that's where you are all entrepreneurs and CEOs of your business. And the whole point is, if this is a game. If you think of it that way, do you know the game and do you consciously develop this business knowing that it, what it is? Brian, I think you had a comment. Well, yeah, just for Carrie and I. So she's at, we're asking, so when you're diving down or starting at the top, you're saying you're a micro franchise, right? And then you're saying, do you throw in then the health and wellness that you as the sub, right? Like yep. 1A? Yeah, you're perfect. You, sorry, I, I muted you on accident because I was clicking around. No, but, you, it's good. It's okay. So you're a segue perfectly into where I wanted to go because your brain okay. is like, well, don't I still have to talk about products? Absolutely. People think of hamburgers when they think of McDonald's. I'm just helping you see that you have the opportunity to be McDonald's corporate and franchise. Right, because so, you're the CEO of your own business. I get that. Yeah, right. You're the top dog. And then you're <laughs> diving down and saying, hey, health and wellness, and let's get started with the number one product is the business. Right. Right. Can you do this? Let's see. It says my sharing is paused. Can you see this quote from Eric Worre? That's uh, McDonald's. 
I see right. a logo for McDonald's. How about that? There you yeah. go. There you go. All right, something's going on with my screen. I'll just do it this way. Okay, so let me go to where Brian um, was talking about. So that you all now see the context of the game you're in, micro franchising in the health and wellness space. Your franchises of what you're creating absolutely is in health and wellness. So you guys answered the question correctly. Just showing you where the first lens should be. Eric Worre, you all know this guy's been around forever. And I think this is a brilliant statement that he made that is a formula. So where I'm at now is if you know your game, let's skip to how you win the game. What is ultimately, how do you know if you're winning at the at micro franchising network marketing game? And he gives this formula for financial independence, which is ultimately, I think what we all want is enough financial resources through our business that we're independent. So I'm like, okay, he's breaking down for us. How do we win? And I wrote it here in red, right? Your ability to get a large group of people to consistently do a few simple things over an extended period of time. Now there's like five things there. So let me break that down a little bit further. Okay. So this is the breakdown of that formula, okay? Your ability, you see it there. What I'm putting next to it is principles to describe this formula that you need to start thinking about and say, do I have these things in my business? Do I feel this is operating successfully in my business right now? If this is the formula for winning in network marketing and successfully creating micro franchises, do I have this first? The ability level. And I'm not just talking your ability, it's basically, and if you're trying to get as many successful franchises around the world that you can, because we've all seen franchises that maybe have closed because they weren't successful, you want successful franchises, right? So the ability has to be kindergarten simple to do this business. And so as I've looked and talked to different leaders, I always ask, when you start a new distributor, how simple is it? really and then i add the word kindergarten which is very important as a principle to guide you literally does a kindergartner if you ask them to do what you're asking a new fran or a franchise or distributor to do can they do it like i literally say picture a kindergartner you know in your life boy or a girl picture that child and if you said go do this could they do it or they go i don't understand and if they say i don't understand you're not simple enough and so this is a key for this formula is understanding and how simple you've made it. And what I found working with seasoned leaders like you is oftentimes you're thinking about you and how you do it and not about the new person. A quote that I like to share to know your game is, it's not about you, it's all about the new. It's not about you, it's all about the new. And so you think of the new person, you think of kindergarten simple, and then you should analyze your onboarding process to get a new distributor started. That's principle number one. To get a large number of people, you gotta really think about recruiting and how you approach recruiting, not just enrolling customers, which you all are experts at, but also bringing on business builders and how you strategize and do that. We'll talk more about it, but do you really emphasize the business opportunity or do you kind of hide it through the product opportunity? Would you like to get your products for free? That's a little bit of hiding the business opportunity through the product versus talking to someone about a business opportunity. There's a difference. And so this is where I get you to think a little bit about how you're approaching bringing people in to the game you're in, which is business and creating these micro franchisers. Third, consistently do a few simple things. That's all about duplication. Simple, few, one, two, three. It's gotta be kindergarten simple, but then what are the basic things that every person does over and over and over and over again consistently, no matter what rank they're at? And do you have that simply really consistently identified and assisting with a new, a new distributor? That's more of what we do for simplification, but thinking in terms of steps, one, two, three. And I'll talk about that in a second. And then finally, over an extended period of time, that's leadership development. This is a hard business, right? You guys all know that. And I think... Stan, did you have everybody read this book, I think, How to Build Network Marketing Leaders, or is it a different one? Uh, yeah, that one, and also the Get Over Your Damn Self. So Romy, if you have, Romy's book is great for what we're talking about, and this one, if you haven't read it, this is what they give at Director's Invitational, I think, still. This one talks about problems and how hard it is, and sometimes people quit. You guys probably had people quit, right? This is about leadership. 
and how you develop people as leaders to keep going even when it gets tough. And so that's why over an extended period of time is do I have a strong leadership development a program in place that once people are really getting their business started, that they keep going and growing and developing into a leader. So that's the formula that is over proven over years to help you know if you're winning at the game of network marketing. So if I was to summarize that, it would be recruit, duplicate, and lead. Those are the basics at kindergarten simple levels. Now, Stan, am I okay to keep going or should I pause? Yeah, for absolutely. No, we're good. Does anybody have any questions out there? Everybody's good? Okay, good. Making sense so far? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Trying to shift your thinking a little bit of where we're going to head, because I'm going to give you some practical things, and then Mark's going to blow your mind with some stuff, okay? So what I'm going to show you now is you got your game, micro franchising, network marketing. You know how you're going to win. Now let's talk about the game plan. Like, okay, what's my plan to win this game? And if you're playing a game, we all know there's usually offense and defense, right? And so this goes with what um, Brian was talking about earlier, okay? So this is the fundamental game plan that I have seen consistently throughout people you know well in, in this <laughs> field. But also if you read Romy's book, you'll see that she says this is the fundamental formula or the game plan to win at this game. This is how you win. Lead with the business, default to the product, pivot to referrals. That's the fundamental game plan of how you approach and work with people, weaving in business with the products, but always remembering you have to ask for referrals. If they don't want the business, since this is network marketing, we're trying to tap into their networks, do you know someone who might be interested in the referral or the business? And then of course you still get them to sign up as the products. If you don't know someone who, if they don't want the product, do you know someone who might like these products? And please know, I understand the verbiage and how it all flows. It's a mat, it's a thing that you have to work through. I'm just showing you a fundamental principle of how you think, and then you start to work in the verbiage that works for you and how you like to present this. But the idea is to remember first that you are a micro franchiser and you're trying to find more franchisees, but of course you're trying to sell as many products as you can. So what I like to show here is if you have a game plan to win in this business and grow your business, you have to have more offense making buckets, making points. So analyze your business of why you need to lead with the business. Then default to the product, of course, we want many, the majority of your revenue in each franchise is gonna come from products, but multiple franchises all over the place for you is where you're really gonna get independence. And then transition, just like if you think about sports, you do offense, it doesn't work, you have to transition back to defense. The transition is always pivoting to referrals. So this is a basic, simple, proven game plan to win in the business that you're in. Let me go down a little bit deeper now on mastering the game. Remember I said, know your game, micro franchising. Master the game, we're gonna go deep here on the, some principles and then how to win the game. And I talked about that. So recruit, duplicate and lead are the basics for the game. And so if one of the questions is how do you get a large number of people engaged? It's about tapping into their trusted networks, which you all know. But what I wanna remind you is this is about mastering and understanding that the game you're in is the new person because that's where their hot networks are. You want the new, if you think about someone who has a network or a new person, they have 10 closest friends. And I know you guys get this, I'm just reminding you. They have 10 closest friends and because they're friends, they already trusted If they say, do this with me, I'm starting this business, do this with me. There's a good chance that person will do it with them just because of the trusted relationship as opposed to having to go to people that aren't as close, you have to do more persuading, maybe more selling or sharing or persuade, right? And doing those things. So what you want is that person, the new person to open up their trusted network and then to teach the people who join from that trusted network to go to their trusted networks. Because if you think about it for a second, let me make you bigger. If you think about it for a second, let's say a new person has 10 closest friends and then four of those friends sign up to be partners with them, to be distributors. Well, more than likely there's crossover, those four person people and that distributor says, okay, now you go get your 10 friends to do this too, or go invite them to do this too. And they're like, well, you and I have the same closest friends, at least these six are the same and you've already asked them, but that person probably has four other people that the original person doesn't know. So that expands that hot network. 
And that's where you want to constantly be trying to get is these hot, hot networks springing up everywhere, all across. But what happens when I'm working with leaders is they get so caught up in their warm and cold market marketing and forgetting it's about getting these new consult, new distributors to spin, to spin and get their new and their new and their new and their new. That's how things go fast. Think about word of mouth on a new um, movie or something that's come out. It's word of mouth through trusted networks that makes it go fast. And so what I'm saying about mastering your game is this is what differentiates us from people who are just marketing down e-commerce through our social media channels. It's through people's trusted networks. That's how we always win and will always win. If we remember that that's what makes us different and make sure we're maximizing that, then we're gonna see our businesses start to grow versus compete head to head with other people trying to market down people's social feeds because they get a lot of that. But a trusted relationship will always trump those social feeds. So we want to tap into that. Does that make sense? Yes. So that is a big fundamental part of how a large number of people get engaged very quickly is by tapping into those tight, tight, hot networks. Okay, I know I'm going fast because I'm very conscious of time, um, but please, if you do have something that doesn't make sense, make sure Stan knows so we can stop. So I will pause. We're still good? I think so, yeah. Uh, so then if you're still thinking about mastering recruiting, I'm just gonna reinforce what we just talked about. It's how you see people. Romy teaches this also in her book, right? When you think about seeing people and bringing them into the business, either they're one, people who see what we see from a business perspective and they join us, two, they wanna be our customers, or three, referral sources. In other words, lead with the business, default to the product, pivot to referrals. It's just always those one of those three buckets, no matter who you meet or talk to, they're in one of those three buckets. And then do you know what to say to them to reinforce and, and contact, or excuse me, and mine those networks to be able to find more people to join us? I'll give you one little side tip too. As I've worked with different leaders in different groups now for nearly a year, this referrals thing seems to be something missing from a lot of verbiage. And it's an interesting to remind you that, hey, we're in the game of network marketing. Stan actually taught this early and that was correct. It's about these networks. So you've got to ask for referrals. Even if the person doesn't join you, they may give you a referral of someone who will that's still doing the business right. So please don't make sure if you think about your business, do you have strong verbiage and strategies for getting referrals from people who say no on the business or the product? One of the last thing on the story, or excuse me, on recruiting, and you all know this, is the power of your story. And I think there's been a lot of training on this that you've received recently. But I wanna emphasize again that most people have their product stories down, how much weight they lost and how their lives were changed. But do you have clear what your business story is and about why you chose to be an entrepreneur in addition to the weight loss? And there's ways to go through designing your story which I think you've received some training on. These are the basic four, but let me just give you, I see a couple of you writing it down, but let me just tell you where it's at, the book, right? Romy's book, this, this slide right here that shows these four is straight from this book. She has a chapter. She shows you how to create a business story. She gives you examples. She even gives you words. So if you haven't done that, create your business story. And the challenge that I give leaders is don't put your product story in there yet. Just write your business story because I want to remember your game you're in, I'm trying to shift your brain to think through the messaging and what attracts people to this business opportunity. And having you write your story is a way to get you first in the flow. And then, it's, then you flow it into your normal conversation of how you introduce the business and the products, et cetera. So this is a resource, which is why Stan asked you to read it because it's absolutely gonna help you and expand in your skills to be able to recruit or enroll more people in the business. And then of course, when you get that story, just like you do for product stories, adapt it and build a library of stories that you can use to reinforce based off of who you're talking to. And here's some examples, right? Who you're talking to, oh, you're you know a single mom, Here's another single mom and why this business blessed her, right? Oh, you have a full-time job? Here's how someone who has the same kind of busy schedule and how they fit it in to build a business. You know, it just creates more connection because sometimes your story won't resonate, but someone else's will. 
but you still need a story to really help bring people in, of course, to this business, because we all know storytelling is critical. All right, that's recruiting and the master and mastering your game. That's the basic things of recruiting that I want to say. Before I go into this, I know I'm flying this at you. This is normally a half day <laughs> workshop and we talk and we have a lot of different things to get this processing, but I just looking at the time and I want to make sure you're good. Who, who would be willing to go off mute and just share, what are you thinking at this point? Is there any, is this all, Steve, we know all of this. We heard everything. This is, or is there something you're picking up here that you're like, man, that could really help my business. I didn't think about that or I forgot about it. Who'd be willing to go off mute? Mike, what do you got? So Steve, this is great stuff. I think what I love about this is it's providing us with a very simple framework that we can populate our own stuff up underneath. So it's not so rigid that it's like, okay, you got to do it this way. And I love the idea that when, and I was thinking about this the other day, you know, when, when I was telling Teresa, you know, we've been at this almost nine years and I still don't know what to say to people when they ask me, what is it that you do? And I love the idea of, you know, I'm a micro franchiser because it automatically piques the interest, right? It leads to follow-up questions. So, I mean, how many times have we said, you know, I'm in the health and wellness business and all of a sudden people just ain't because they've heard it before. So I love that. I love the framework here. I love that we're going back to already existing content, you know, with uh, Eric Worre and also with Romy's book. So I really appreciate this, getting a lot of value out of it. And I love that you see that because again, if you're saying you like the term micro franchise, and I, I, I believe it's compliant, you might, if you, you might check to make sure, because I'm just trying to help you see a concept, but you're mm -hmm. right, Mike, someone who's like a micro franchise, what do you franchise? Well, you're now talking about, well, if you want to know my business partners, we're in the health and wellness space, but this is the business and this is what it can provide. Oh, I don't think I'm looking for a new business. Well, you're interested in the products? You yeah. And you all of a sudden, look, you just led with the business and you defaulted to the products. No, I don't want the products. Do you know someone who might want the business or the products? Boom, game plan, right? And it's a quick, easy flow. Yeah, so I love that you see it. Thank you. Other, does anyone else have a thought so far as we're through it? Go ahead, Stan. Uh, Nicole had something up there in the corner. Go, Nicole. Oh, let me unmute you. Yeah, there you I go. Had yeah, I just wanted to say, um, you know, over the years, this is, you know, I've fallen into that. This is a hobby type thing, but this is really making a framework for me to really see this as a business. Uh, just using the micro, uh, the word micro franchising is like, oh, wow, that's what we really do. So, um, and I did everything Mike said too. This is really, really great. Thank you. So Nicole, I love that. Cause remember, you're like, I know the game I'm in now or the business I'm really in. And it still is health and wellness, but really this is why it's so powerful of what network marketing gives you to be able to do this. And as Zingler grows globally, which has always been Mark's vision, right? Right. You're at the early stages of this and you want to be at all those as the top person, as many franchises you can create. So I love that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Let me go back to this then. I see you guys, I can tell from the comments, you're really getting there. So now let's get to if you're going to master the game, remember to recruit, duplicate, and lead. So the master the game, and I'm going to tell you up front, if there's one thing to remember from this whole thing today, it's about what I'm about to tell you. Because this seems to be the most eye-opening part to leaders when I share this principle with them to really understand how do I understand to create duplication? Because there's different ideas of what duplication is. So to explain this a little bit, I'm gonna use my friend Iron Man. So I was watching Iron Man with my son, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and we were watching Iron Man 2, right? And you probably, if you haven't seen Iron Man, he's a superhero with a big old metal suit, right? And, but what he found out in Iron Man 2 was that even though he had this amazing suit that he figured out in the number one, and he's saving the world and so many people are happy and he's walking across stage and he's all waving. Wait, I'm kind of crossing into network marketing for a second, but you get my point. You've got this amazing business and you think it's awesome. He realized and knew something wasn't right in his business. And so he started looking and that's what this is, is him. He's like, I am looking at every part of my business and I'm trying to figure out why is it? And what was happening in the movie is the thing that was powering his suit inside the glowy circle thing 
actually was burning up and making him die. It's killing him. And he's like, although the outside seems awesome, something's not right. And this business and this suit is not working right. And he kept looking and looking. He got kind of depressed. This is him eating on top of a donut shop, a bunch of donuts. Cause he's like, I'm dying. And I've looked everywhere. I've done everything. And this thing isn't working. But then he got a guide in the movie. He actually got a message from his father who had long passed. It's a cool way how he did it saying, there's something you haven't seen. There's another element to this that you don't know exists that you can't, once you see it, will solve your problem of the power source to really elevate what you're trying to do, to be that hero you're trying to be. So when he showed him this principle that there was this element out there, he kept looking and looking and looking until he finally found it. This is a picture of him looking at that core power source and creating it and realizing that once he had that source and put it in the suit, he absolutely went to another level of strength. And in fact, Iron Man 3 was all about duplication. <laughs> and he just had superheroes everywhere. But the power source had to be seen and understood before he could unleash this. And when I saw that in the movie, I'm like, I see an analogy here and I'm trying to help you see it. And the first thing we're showing here, right, to consistently do a few simple things. This is going to sound very basic, but I promise you it's the first part of a very important principle. It has to be one, two, three, go, kindergarten simple. And I talked about it earlier, but it has to be that simple. And it has to be one, two, three, not 10 steps, not 20 steps. Just do these three things or even this one thing. And you can really start to grow your business. To truly duplicate, it has to be there. And so when I say the new consultant journey, I'm being generic, but what I mean is the new distributor, right? When the new distributor starts, is it that simple that maximizes the comp plan for all new distributors to become new enrollers? And I'm gonna talk about this in a second, but all I'm asking you to do is think, is the absolute first thing when someone says, yes, I wanna be a distributor, what's the first thing you tell them to do? And if it's not something so simple that starts creating duplication, then you're not really starting them the most powerful way. Like, okay, go get your office ready. I know you guys wouldn't say that, but those types of things are not really the first things to start a new distributor. I'm gonna share something with you too, just for, to help you. There's a process or a, that we go through um, when I've worked through this workshop to help people distill down the one, two, three that helps them get started. And I'm not saying this is it for you, but with all that I've done for a few of these now and kind of listen to tens and tens of leaders break down with this question of kindergarten simple, I've heard a very, a pattern of, uh, that I believe has come out of it. And I wanna share it with you. And it's a tip, tip. These seem to be one, two, three simple. Tell your friends, invite to a testimony page, post on your social media. And if you think about from a kindergartner, if I said to a kindergartner, and I have a kindergartner two doors down for me, hey, hey, go tell your friends that you're doing this. Okay. Okay, hey, I want you to invite them to a party. And our party is, of course, on the testimony page or invite them to this page. So a lot of kindergartners would know how to do an invitation through social media. And I want you to make this post. Kindergartner could probably make a post. And so this simple tip is a one, two, three, might be a good foundation for you to start thinking about and seeing if it's a duplication one, two, three that works for you. Please know it may not be. Other people have different approaches. And a couple other things that I've heard some leaders say is if, if it's in this order, TIP, that's still not kindergarten or simple because telling your friends might be the scariest thing they do. And so one thing you could ask is, which of these three do, would you like to do first? What's the most comfortable for you? and then see where they go. And then that kind of helps you do it. And again, I, I want you to know, I'm just giving you some things I've heard. I'm not saying this is the ultimate, but I wanted you to see a practical way to use this one, two, three, go principle I'm telling you and how simple it needs to be for you to think about your start for a new distributor to get them to duplicate. Let me just make sure to look at the time. I gotta keep hustling. All right, actually, I'm gonna stop because this was a big, a big deal. Thoughts on this? 
thoughts about what you're hearing related to the point of how simple the starting one, two, three has to be. Christy, I'm looking at you. Oh, you already off mute. What you I was just getting ready to pick on her too. Go ahead, Christy. Go ahead, Christy. Well, what I have found that works, and I do mine a little different, like you said, Steve, I do IPT. So I tell my people, because I realized we're giving them way too many things to do at the same time, overwhelming, and they just don't get it. So I love this. I'm like soaking it up, taking pictures. I'm just doing it all. But I tell them, okay, first of all, invite your friends to the testimonial page. And then I always say, let me know when you're done. So you do I don't wanna... one. Yeah. So I give them one step because I also have found, I found a lot of builders lately. And I found that if I give them all three, eh, they kind of do maybe one or the other. So once they do that, I say, okay, now I want you to go post in that page, in the testimonial page, just how excited you are. Let me know when you're done. And then after that, we post on their walls and then we work on their friends list. There you so go. That's what I do, IPT. And, and it's what, working, you guys. <laughs> and another thing, Christy, I love that. And you probably saw this too. One of the things that's brilliant about doing invite to the testimony page first is let's say they don't do anything else. What do you get? You get their network. You get their that's network. What is. That's what I'm teaching my people. Do that first because then... If they're like, oh, you know what? I really don't want to put it out there. Guess what? All their people are already in my page. So that's what I try to do first. And so Christy is an expert at this and she's thought through even more relentless this principle of one, two, three, simple. And she knows her game, which is about the network. And she says, this is why I'm encouraging that to be number one, because at a minimum, I'll get access to more people that I can market to and maybe get more leads from. Right. Very good. Did you have something else, Dan? No, I just, and she does do it very well. She's booming. She is growing fast. Christy, that's perfect. Okay. That's up. I got something. Um, I just, I was said, I woke up the other night thinking about, I got to simplify things and organize things so people, I don't have to keep telling them to do all these things. So I went ahead and put 16 things. <laughs> checklist of 16 things you know and um, i'm realizing hold it i gotta i gotta do the one two three and then i can give them that as maybe an advanced you know here's the detailed stuff let's keep it simple and get you started right see i love that because if you think about it i want the kindergartner to be successful as a kindergartner and then eventually she she needs to be first second third grade that's where you got to gauge where all that comes in. But remember, how you win is to get that spinning at the hot market, the new person. And if a new person can do that, and I'll show you one more piece to this in a second, but if that new person can teach a new person to do it without you, oh, then you know you've gotten something flying because you're not holding hands. And that's overwhelming and you're working and that's, that's really not sustainable, but it's about getting these new people to start simply and almost without you. Brian, I think I saw your, thanks Gary. Brian, I think I saw you raise your hand. You're pointing somewhere else. You're good? I'm good, okay. This is great, you guys are totally seeing it. And again, Christy was great to point out. That's what I'm saying, please, I'm not the expert. You're the expert. I'm just reflecting on things that I hear, but just like Christy did, she decided what was best for her business, her own approach. That's all I'm suggesting is to show you a principle of one, two, three, go, kindergarten simple, and Gary, you just are doing that. You're looking through that lens and you're like, huh, 16 is still too much. I better whittle it down. Yes. And that's what I think Stan wanted me to do was show you some principles and get you thinking this way, which will then start to accelerate getting your business grow. All right. So here's the second piece. Remember I told you earlier on to know how to win the game. It's in, in the hint, it wasn't your check and your sales. That's secondary to that. This is where Tony Stark truly, truly got it. And this is it. If you see an increase in the number of new kindergartners and rollers creating new kindergartners and rollers in your business, almost without you, you know that your duplication engine is really starting to fire up. And that's the, the thing that makes your business blow up. Think about it. And I use these words on purpose. A new enroller, kindergartner simple, you sign someone up as a distributor and they can have the D on their name, but let's say they just buy product. They're not a distributor, right? They're just a customer. You need someone who's doing actual distributor activities. And the ultimate is, is are they enrolling someone? 
that's where you know they're bringing someone into the network. So that's the key is understanding if I get a new enroller, but then here's the second, but that new enroller creates another new enroller. Without me, this is the win. So you need to start looking in your business like Tony Stark did. Do you see this? Is that happening in your business? Because if it's not, you might say, hey, someone got to fast start or quick start. That's perfect. That's important for retention. But true duplication is this, a new enroller creating a new enroller. Think about that one more time. So a distributor signs up and she enrolls someone. So there's a second person. That person she enrolled enrolls someone. And there's a third person. If that happens, those two hops without you over and over and over and over and over again, all these hot markets starting to come into your business, that's when this thing starts to explode. And what you're gonna see when Mark, Mark gets on here in a few minutes, he's gonna show you how he designed the comp plan to, to incentivize you to do just that. And that's why it's all mixed together to show you how this is set up with, with your business to just, just explode. But you need to see this principle to make it work. All right. That's in a very important point. Let me look at the time. I'm gonna have you guys make comments again. I know we've touched on this. You see one, two, three, go. What are you thinking as I show you the new enroller creating the new enroller? Do you think, is that happening in your business? Are you thinking about your business that way? Who'd like to go off mute and tell me some of your thoughts? It's okay if it's messy. Is it confusing? Am I, is I actually? No, no, and that's what I've started doing too. I've just got a few new people and that's what we're doing. Um, I wasn't strategizing quite as smooth as this, but I was doing the, the things. I was getting them to invite people to the testimonial page and then uh, invite their friends there, of course, and then trying to get them to make a post on Facebook, which we've been doing. And uh, from there, trying to get that to duplicate. And I like what you're doing here for everybody because I think we all needed this. So think about, okay. sorry, does someone else have a comment? Christy, go. Well, I was just going to say, I didn't do it like this before. And everything that you're saying is stuff that I've just been incorporating just recently. And it's completely different because before I always felt like, okay, I got to be involved. I got to make sure they know the steps, you know, and I guess that part of it was the trust issue. Like you don't, you don't really believe that much in them because you feel like you don't want them to mess up that kind of thing. But by doing the little steps, it has been so easy for the other people. I mean, I have, and then the boards on top of that, I have new people coming in, adding us to chats and they're doing everything from the first one. They don't even need us anymore. So if they're following these little steps, I know I'm like, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. I love it. <laughs> and I can't even sleep at night because I'm so dang pumped about it. I just can't wait to wake up and get going. But doing the little steps, like you mentioned, you guys, it is brilliant because if you can get them to add to your page, even if they get overwhelmed or they don't like the zing or, you know what I mean? Their friends talk them out of it. You still have that network. And I'm glad you touched on that, Steve, because it's super powerful. When you think about one person signing up and think, oh my gosh, I got to sign up. They know at least a hundred people that you don't know. So if you can just, you know, share that with them. So I love that you're going over this because it's actually going to make it easier for me to teach my leaders what you're saying now that I heard it instead of me just trying to, you know what I mean, fix it myself. But it's seriously brilliant. And I feel like I have complicated this for, <laughs> I don't even know how many years, trying to figure out, you know, what's going to work and what's not. But it's really, you always hear, keep it simple. Mark has told us that forever. But really, we still complicate things. So by doing this and giving us these little tips, it's exactly what we need to hear. So I love it. Thank you. And if you hear a couple of things, I want to pull out what Christy's saying, right? This is where, remember what I said, how the three buckets, you see everyone and it's still, it's about a source of referrals, which is Rudy, Rudy Revac says this, right? It, not just the sale or the person who purchased from you is valuable. What's even more valuable is their network because that's the game you're in. Those trusted networks starting to spin all over the world. Don't think you have to compete like other people do down e-commerce who are targeting you with their ads. I know that's a part of our business is to market that way, but how we win 
is this duplication through the trusted networks like Christy is saying. And so Christy, because you see it so clearly, you're redesigning your business to support that and you're starting to see results. The key now is to be relentless because what I've seen also happens as you get further and further in your business, you get what's called the curse of knowledge. You forget how hard it is to start. And so everything seems easy to you, but you forget what it's like to be new. And the key is to always remember the new. I'll say it again, it's not about you, it's all about the new. And make sure that's a key part of what you're doing and this thing is gonna blow. Other thoughts on that new enroller creating the new enroller? Anything that you're hearing from Christy or it's triggering with you and it's okay if it's messy. Help. Ray, go ahead. I saw you raise your hand. Go for it. But you're on mute. Did you want to mute. say something? Unmute. All right. Um, I was just going to say, uh, you know, like Christy said, it's so easy. And then I don't know what letter you would use, but then, you know, another thing to follow that is to, uh, get the boards app, you know, and then have them um, download the Zingular Share app too. I mean, because that has such good info, but I think these boards are just going to be a game changer because you can put right in there. Here's what you do. Here's, you know, step one, step two. I mean, it has everything all in there for you. And so it makes it, I think, easy that anybody can put that on their keyboard and do that. And then they'll, you know, learn by you know, the steps that you're telling them to do, here it all is. And it's wrote right out there for you. So I love that's it. All. And boards has been a great tool, I know, to help in the duplication to give, for example, verbiage to people. And that way they know what to say to invite their friends. And that makes it easier for them to duplicate, right? Because it's the new enroller creating the new enroller. Even though that new person's doing TIP or whatever order you're doing, the key is to get them to sign up someone and that they also sign up someone. And so they need the verbiage or some guidance to help them do those hops. And I think boards has been a great tool, right, Ray? That's what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Other thoughts or comments about new enrollers creating new enrollers? Hey, Steve, I know I'm early, but can I jump in with one thought? Of course, go Mark. <laughs> so, it's interesting, you know, to obviously I can go back the 11 years that we've had Singular going, but it's interesting to look back and see the things that we've done well. And then, you know, to Stan's point, some of the mistakes we've made and we have great products and they work really, really well. And so for a new person, it's really easy to just kind of default to the products, take the products, you're going to feel better. And then we'll worry about the rest later. But one of the things is while we might know, hey, there's more and we're going to get to the rest later, to Steve's point, a new person under a new person doesn't know that. And so what we've done inadvertently is foster this products only type mentality and then, um, you know, turned everybody into product coaches, basically. And and I want you to think about two two things. Steve, Steve is talking about making it so easy that a new person can do what you do, right? And a, and a lot of that is based on this. Each of you in one, one full complete day can help so many people, right? You can talk to so many people, you can, can chat so many people, FaceTime so many people, and then you're out of day, you're out of time, okay? And, and we've been actually locked into that for years. Um, you, your potential has been limited by time. Your potential is limited by the amount of time you can put in, how many people you can reach. Um, and what, what Steve's saying now is that what we're trying to do is change our mindset to, in his words, the fact that you're micro franchisees and the only way to be successful, you can do your franchise, right? And you can, you can do some good and you can make some money, but, but really why we're here isn't just so you can do your franchise. We're here to help as many people as possible do what you do, okay? So, so then putting it back on you, what is your true goal? What is your real job, right? Your real job isn't just to help the onesie twosie people lose weight and feel better and et cetera, et cetera, and fill your day with that. Your real job is to, through simplification, and making sure that you help 
other people do what you do. Your real job is to help thousands of people. But the only way to do it is to get really good at understanding your micro franchisers. But really, your job is to share and teach other people how to be micro franchisees, how to do what you do. And, and I think that that mindset is different than what we've been doing. And so I, I, love what, I love the way that Steve teaches and what he does. He walks you down this path to show us that, okay, you know, we need to make some changes, right? We need to, we need to improve. Um, otherwise, we literally, as, a, as individuals and as a company, we, we basically, I'm trying to think of the right way to say it. We, we tell millions of people all over the world, hey, you know what? We can't help you. Okay, because unless we can literally multiply ourselves and expand our reach, we're, we're stuck with just what we can do in a day. And there are millions and millions of people who need, not just want, but need what we have, whether it's the products or whether it's the opportunity. And we've got to get really good at sharing and duplicating what we do and how we do it so that we can reach more people. In one day you can reach 10 people but if there was 10 of you in one day, you can reach a hundred. Okay. And so that's what, anyway, that, that excites me because we're going to go into other countries. We're going to expand around the world. The only way to do that really is, is to multiply the number of people who are doing what you do. And the only way to do that is to make sure you guys understand that you are, you are people builders, you are people developers. Uh, our job is to, teach others how to do what we do. So anyway, way longer than I was going to take, Steve. Sorry. Nah, I love tag teaming with you, man. And you guys see the passion. And this is this is a perfect segue. Where you're going to mark it ready. I'm going to kick it to you of what you guys are going to learn next of how then you maximize this comp plan. Because if you remember what I was saying here, the ultimate formula is one, two, three, go. Kindergarten simple that maximizes the comp plan. That's the key because it's still about still ultimately getting as much profitability, your business, your CEOs, your entrepreneurs. So Mark's gonna show you and share with you a little more about how that works. I do wanna add one last thing as a final comment and then I'll kick it to, to Mark. Brian, you asked a good question and I think in the chat about where you send your new distributors to get stories for your results page. And I, Christy, I love your answer. Just wanna throw something out. If you have a testimony page that's already flowing in your process, the question you should ask is, how am I leading with the business defaulting to the products inside that page? Like how much of my business story is flowing into the same page as my product results? If you don't have enough business mixing with product, you might have to revisit what that is because that's a great place for you to get more people. And that's a lot of what leaders have realized when they look at their testimony page, they go, man, this is very heavy product focused results. Probably should show some business results, compliant of course, but that's something I would suggest is Think about how that flow happens and you'll see how it fits into your model for the business building. Does that make sense, Brian? So, well, Stan, I know that's, I've gone just a minute or so over, but that's what I think you wanted me to go through today, right, sir? Yes, it is. And I just want to tell you, uh, you have, uh, you've made an incredible difference in our company for one, but you've made a heck of a difference in the way I look at this business. And I thank you so much. And I'll talk to you again later on today or tomorrow, a little chat with you, but thank you so much for taking the time out of here. And you guys, anybody else have anything they'd like to say real quick to Steve before he runs off? Just thank you, Steve. You're welcome. It's great to see all of you. And I'm really excited. I've already switched hosts to the man myth legend. I love this man. <laughs> To share with you more so take more notes and learn from the great mark walker you guys love you guys thanks again steve hey steve can i ask one little favor yeah okay before i go into what i'm going to go into steve steve talks about something that i think is really important and he talks about the fact that you are the ceo okay. of your organization will you will you spend three to five minutes on that because i, th I think that that steve is important before we go into what i'm going to talk about because it, it aligns, you know, it sets the thinking, right? Yeah, okay. You know what I'm gonna do? I'll play off of Nicole. Cause Nicole, what she said earlier about, man, I was thinking about this as a hobby, but I realized this is a business. Nicole, that was you shifting and realizing you're a CEO. 
you own a business, you partner with Zingular, who is the best partner in the world, I promise you that, but it's still your business as a CEO, right? And Mark, if I think I remember what you're asking me to talk about is to help you realize the value of your time, the value of what you're doing, and ultimately treating this as a, as a business. Um, Mark, I don't know, did you want me to go into the time and calculation or give me a little more? And I'm happy to let you just teach what I normally teach because I think there's something in your mind. Well, yeah, you, I mean, what the, the principle behind that is, is so good because it does help you understand that this isn't a hobby, this is a business. And Steve goes through an exercise and I, I would love him to do it, but you know, depending on what you got going, Steve, whatever. But he goes through a business that values the size of your organization. Okay. And I love that because it sets, it sets okay. your business. I think it changes your business from the hobby into, wow, I do have a business, right? Okay. I think I know. So let's do this exercise. I now know what Mark's asked me to do. I'm glad he sees this. So quick exercise. And what the intent is, like he said, is to help you realize what you've created. So take out your calculator or write it down and think of the highest month and QV you've had, like just the month and say, I've reached a hundred thousand a month, right? Let's say that's the highest you've gotten as executive or maybe 50,000 or 75,000 or something. Take that and multiply it by 12. So if I do the hundred thousand times 12, that's a $1.2 million business. And the reason I say it that way, and this isn't an exact science, but it's to Mark's point, it's to show you, oftentimes these leaders uh, look at your check, the payment you get from Zingular. And sometimes you say that my paycheck, and I'm like, that's not a paycheck, that's profit, right? Because you have a business and you've partnered with Zingular. And I have you do the month times 12 because you deserve credit for every dollar that you brought in. And I understand there's overlapping organizations and all of that, but if you think about your organization, you bring in that money, that dollars, it's all processed through Zingular, of course, but you sold and brought in 1.2 million. And that's a large business in the United States if you just say that as an executive. And then if you're even bigger than that, Christy, Stan, others, Gary, right? If you think about it, you've built a multi-million dollar business and you don't treat it like a hobby when you realize the size of what you've created in terms of relative entrepreneurial value throughout the United States, right? Like the Inc. 500 or the Inc. 5000, when you read that magazine and they're highlighting these entrepreneurs and then you drill in and look at the size of their businesses, 2 million, 3 million a year. So you have to say, wait a minute, a magazine is writing about them and my business is approaching their size or is getting there you have a significant value of what you've created and you need to see it that way. And then make sure you use your time appropriately to invest and continue to grow that because that, what you're building is gonna provide you so much value in your family and posterity value for years to come. And I think it's just the shift similar to what we showed you today, but also the business shift like Nicole was saying earlier is critical to that. Mark, is, I think, is that what you were wanting me to go through or is there something more? Nope, that's it, Steve. And thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah, okay, get, ready. get ready, you guys. Buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Steve. All right. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm, I'm glad Steve went through that because, again, it helps you, again, well, to Steve's point, people look at their business partly by your volume, but you really don't think about, well, that's the month, right? And and what is what titles that get me or whatever, um, and then you look at your check. Well, I earned X, and so people don't think about literally the size of your business. Every business that we know of doesn't say, "Oh, I do, I do two thousand a month," or the owner doesn't say, "Oh, I earn, you know, four thousand a month." That's not that's not how they do it. A business tells you these are our yearly sales. Okay, that's what they always tell you, right? So when when you just say, "Well, here was a month." That doesn't really give you the size of your business. So as we're going through what I'm going to go through, I wanted you to, to have that in your head because everything that I'm going to talk about is either a way to, well, it's a way to grow your business, okay? Uh, it's the things to watch to know the health of your business, the direction of your business. Just like 
as a company, we go through our financials at the end of every month and we look at, you know, so how did last month go? And what was our, what were our sales? What was our, what were our expenses? What was our profit? How does that compare to the previous month? How does that compare to the same month last year? Um, in fact, we have a uh, 18 month running graph of sales, profit, you know, everything because there's seasonality and I don't want to know. So we grew 10% over last month. Yippee, but how are we compared to same month last year, right? Um, and so we want to know the direction of the company. And so that's why we, we graph all these things. And as CEOs of your business, the things I'm going to talk about are the, the financials, I guess you could say, that I hope you go back and look at um, at the end of every month, because then you know the health of your business. Then you know the direction. And I know people who write down at the end of every month some of the numbers that we're going to go through so that they can look back a year, year and a half, two years and know what was going on in their business because they understand that it is a business and they want to know the direction of their business. And so um, anyways, we're going through what I want to talk about. Then I, that's, that's again, the, the thought I wanted to have in your head because it's, it's a real thing. Now, let me pull up what I want to talk about and see if I can share the screen. Maybe. Okay, let's see if we can. Okay, now what I want to share. Do you guys see anything? Yeah, leadership training. So you do see it. Okay, well, I don't. So I don't know what slide I'm on. I see some other Zoom thing. Let me see if I can get this figured out. Sorry, you guys. Okay. I'm impressed that you're doing it without Julie behind you. I might need Julie behind me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I don't know why it's coming not coming up in full screen. Do you guys see my screen with the slides down the left? No. no. You see the leadership no. training? No. It says leadership, leadership training, training across the front, but it's only one slide. What does it say? Leadership training. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I'm going to hope this works. So let me see if this goes to the next slide. Uh, sorry, guys, this works usually. I don't know. Don't know why it's not working here. Let me try. It's not a setting on mine, is it? No, it says to share, but it's not pulling it up on my screen. Dang it, now it's not letting me move. Julie. Yeah, right. Seriously. Huh? <laughs> I'm usually hollering for Ray. Okay. What does it say now? It just says leadership training. So it didn't switch? No. Hmm. Let's stop it again. I apologize for this. Usually this works just really easily. It just shows us that anybody can do this business, Mark. This is actually really good. <laughs> this actually, that's exactly what this shows, okay? That's oh, mine and Gary's line. But well, we're not supposed to duplicate this part, right? <laughs> no, don't duplicate this. Huh, okay, I am so stumped.
Now what does it show? Same leadership training. Yeah. Mark, if you if you right click or right tap or whatever on that slide, does it say anything? Like advance the next slide. No, it doesn't. It, it brings it up and kind of locks it. So I don't know. Does it still, what does it show to you now? It's just the title screen, the leadership training. So somehow I'm on a different slide than what's showing. How do I make that switch, Mike? What are you using? PowerPoint? Yeah. Let me throw up my PowerPoint here. So are you doing a presenter mode? Yes. And you're using your right arrow, left arrow to scroll or trying to? Yeah, when I do presenter mode, it's not, like it switches on my screen, but I'm not seeing what you're seeing, obviously, because mine's moving and you're not. So somehow I'm on a different slideshow than you or what? I know Steve was having a lag earlier, but this seems to be more than a lag. Let me close this. Mark, it's the old um, branding on that screen. I don't know if if it's supposed to be or. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't updated the branding yet. OK, then you yeah. But I'm on a different slide than the beginning screen, and I don't know why you guys are not. And can you advance to the next slide? Or does it lock your screen, like you said? No, I can advance, but you guys are looking at the heading slide and I'm down in the presentation. So you still see just the heading slide? Well, right now we see you, so. Oh, you don't see a slideshow? Nope. No, not right now. All right. How do I do this? Hmm. Well, now I don't know. Don't know if it'd be any good for you to log out and log back in again, if that would make any difference, but. Okay, let me try one more time to try and Share screen because that's there you go. That's the leader training module two. Okay, sweet. All right, let's see, this, let's see if this works. Okay, so um, what I want to talk about, and, and we'll cross our fingers, this works. What I want to talk about is basically a couple of things that you guys as CEOs of your organization need to know, okay? And again, the, the smarter you are and the more you know, uh, the better business you can build, right? And Again, these are not just for you, but the smarter you are and the more you know, uh, the, the better you're able to teach a new person that comes in how to, how to build their business, okay? So um, we're gonna start out with a couple of things about maximizing the comp plan because this leads into why we do what we do as a company, but also why you should do what you do as a leader. So does it show residual commissions now? Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, so. So uh, Christy, even old dogs can actually sometimes make things happen. <laughs> you know. um, okay, so you guys know the comp plan and you know that this is the unilevel part of it. My, my thing here is that we pay a higher percentage on your first four levels than we do on the next four levels. And I wanna know why, why do we do that? The that's answer's at the bottom of the screen. Okay. Sorry, what? That's where we want to focus on building our first four levels. 
that's the, the basis of your team. Right. Because, and that's exactly right. But the reason is because what happens in the first four levels of your organization determines the direction of the next four levels of your organization. Okay. And I'm going to go through a couple of examples to show you, but I want you to understand that you are the CEO of the first through two, three levels of your group. And then after that, it's somebody else's organization. Okay. Because if you're doing what you should be doing and duplicating leaders, somebody else is the leader over that organization. And you can't influence what happens in levels five, six, seven, eight. Okay. But you can influence what happens in levels one, two, three, and a little bit four, but mostly one, two, three. Okay. So I, I want you to understand that when you go and look at your organization, that's where you focus. Those are the things you, you look at and say, how is my group doing? I used to have leaders that would call me and they're like, hey, I had 40 million signups last month. And I'm like, okay, in my organization is what they'd say. I'm like, okay, how many did you have in the first four levels? Because I don't really care about the rest, right? And at first I put off some people because they were like, well, I only had, you know, 37 in my first four levels. I'm like, well, you're a silver executive. So you should have way more than 37 in your first four levels, right? Because what's happening deep down in your organization, that's somebody else working. That's somebody else that's leading. That wasn't them. And they had to get it in their head that it doesn't matter what's going on in your total group. What matters is going on in the part of your organization that you influence, which is that top part. Okay. So we pay more in those first couple of levels because that determines the, the future direction of your organization. So going to the next one, uh, I want to give you some examples, okay? Now, these are real singular accounts. I have changed the names of the people to protect the guilty in Luke's case, uh, innocent in Dorothy's case. So these, again, real organizations, okay? I didn't, I didn't make these up. These are real, but I want you to look at the results of what these people are either doing or not doing. Now, Luke here is, he's building a group. He's got almost 64,000 points in his organization. Uh, his check this month was $3,363.63. Funny enough, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, and if you divide the volume by the total commissions, his commission percentage is about 5.2%. So Luke is making 5.2% off every single point of volume that comes in his organization, okay? Now, do you guys think that, that 64,000 is a good organization? Do you think that $3,300 a month is, is a good you know, part-time income off that volume? Some people say yes. I, I actually don't think that's good because then you have Dorothy. Can you guys see Dorothy? Yes. Okay. Now, Dorothy how also has an organization. She has a little bit more volume than Luke, only, only a couple thousand. Uh, but look at her check. So Dorothy making $6,000 every single month off 70,000 in volume. And our little Luke up here making $3,300 off just 6,000 less points. How is Dorothy making almost twice the money off just a few more points. Anybody want to venture a guess? Duplicating. Her volume okay. up higher. Perfect. Yeah. Yes. She's working. She's not making someone else do it all. <laughs> exactly. Let's let's dive into their organization. Okay. Level one. Is Luke sponsoring? He was at one time, but no. No, he's not sponsoring. In fact, he hasn't sponsored in a long, long, long time. I know who Luke is, okay? Luke hasn't sponsored in a long, long, long time. He, he's, he's just writing the efforts of other people. 222 points, first level. It's been about four years since Luke sponsored anybody, okay? Um, nobody on the first level is working, really. 1,400 points there. Really, nobody on the second level is working. It's not clear down here till the fifth level, so he's got somebody working on level four who's sponsoring and, and doing some duplication so that he has 8,700 uh, points in his fifth level, okay? So, so nothing going on. Everybody's doing a really good job of following Luke's example up here. And it's not till level four that somebody's working, okay? Now let's go back and look at Dorothy. 
Is Dorothy sponsoring? Yes. Wow. Dorothy's sponsoring like crazy, right? 7,400 on her first level. Dorothy's a sponsoring machine. I love her. Uh, is she teaching duplication? It appears. It appears she is. She has twice as much volume on level two. There's a lot of duplication going on on level one, right? And then, you know, she's got a little group here, but big, big, right? And, and so Dorothy is, I know, again, just looking at these accounts, looking at this volume and how it's laid out, I know Luke's not sponsoring. Luke hasn't sponsored him forever. Luke doesn't have any duplication. Uh, and it's really far down in his org organization before anybody's doing anything. Looking at Dorothy, Dorothy's doing fantastic. She sponsors every month. She's teaching duplication as evidenced by level two. You know what I mean? And, and she has a vibrant, uh, just massively growing organization. And because of that, Dorothy is making twice the money as Luke. Now, just, just a little something to think about. How often do we pay? Daily. Daily. Okay. So Dorothy is making more money every single day, 8.7% on every point of volume coming through her organization. She's making more money every day than Luke makes every day. Okay. Because she has structured her organization. She is putting in the time and effort to teach duplication in her organization and Luke's not. And so we as a company, going back to my first graph, are paying her more every single day of every single month of every single year than we're paying Luke, okay? So my question to you is, do you wanna be Luke or do you wanna be Dorothy? Because we pay 50 to 52% out every single month on the volume that comes into our company. We pay, right? We pay it to somebody, but you decide, is it gonna be me? Or is it going to be somebody else? We as a company don't have the ability to decide who the money goes to. We just, we just make sure we pay it out every single day. Okay. So you as the CEO of your organization determine the profitability of your organization based on what you do every single day and what you teach every single day to Steve's point. All right. And, and again, I love this because we built the plan this way. We built it to pay the people that are working. We built it to pay the people that are duplicating, to pay the people who are teaching other people how to get where they are, not just worried about themselves growing their organization and, and et cetera, et cetera, right? And, and I actually am going to kind of go off topic a little bit. Um, if you are close to a, to a title or a, or a trip or something, Instead of putting out on Facebook, hey, uh, I hope everybody in my group helps me so that I can hit Dubai, right? Um, okay, you might want to hit Dubai, but how's that helping anybody? Okay, I think it's better to put on Facebook, hey, my group's on fire this month. I've got this person that's close to that, th that person that's close to this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to do everything I can to help all those people get to their goals. And by doing that, guess what's going to happen? you're going to get to your goal. Okay. Because again, one of the things we built into our plan was that if you help enough other people get what they want, you're going to be fine. Our plan does not have a lot of the artificial blocks and the, and the things that most other plans have in them to where, you know, in order for you to progress, you have to have a bunch of people at these exact levels. We don't have that. Ours is all volume based. Okay. So you help somebody get to uh, their headquarter trip and this person get to their uh, their director invitational trip and this, these couple of people get their quick start, all of a sudden what happens to you, you're going to be fine. Okay. So always remember, it's not about what, about me or what I can do. It's about what I can help other people do. If I want to, if I want to grow and I want to do good at singular, it's not about me. It's about how good I am at helping other people. Okay. And the better we are at helping other people, the better you're going to do. Now, I'm going to go one step further, and I'm going to do this really fast because we're running out of time, but I want to show you another part of a well-structured organization versus not, because every day you put time and effort into your organization, hopefully, okay? And, and in Luke's case, even if he was putting time and effort into his organization, it's clear down on level four, right? Luke's got somebody on level four that he's working with, let's say, hopefully he's not, but we can hope. Um, and, and that person sponsors somebody is sponsoring people on level five. So Luke gets 
uh, a, what I call a cycle of duplication. He gets return on the effort invested, both for volume and for pay. And then when that person on level, sorry, I meant level, yeah, four to five. So then when that person on level five does something, Luke gets return on the, because he gets paid on the volume and he gets, he gets to increase his total volume. So he gets paid on the, he gets a return on the, on the time invested, both on volume and effort. But by the time you get to seven, by the time that person on level seven sponsors, you don't get a return on the title anymore. You still get paid, but level eight does not increase your title. And I've had people ask me why not? And that's a really good question. And that's something that we debated and debated and debated before we started the company. Because I knew it would be easier for you if we let you count the volume on level eight. My concern was that it would be too easy, that you would be tempted or able, tempted to ride on other people's efforts and you would build a, an organization that looked like Luke. You'd sponsor some people and then you know think, okay, somebody else is gonna do the work, I'm not gonna do anything. And I decided finally that including level eight towards your title was not the direction that we wanted to go. We wanted leaders that were engaged. We wanted people who were who had built a healthy group, much like Dorothy. And so we did not, purposefully did not allow people to count their volume on level eight towards their title. Okay, and that's the reason, because I didn't believe that it would, it would motivate people to build a strong organization. I thought it would it would kind of motivate them to build a weak organization, and so we we that was a that was a purposeful decision on our part. Um, but by doing that, we, we did accomplish what we wanted. We have a lot of people, a lot of people who get to high high titles to high levels, but they're still engaged, right? And they're still talking to new people and sponsoring and duplicating and building leaders under them. And as evidenced by Dorothy here, it pays her time and time and time again. Dorothy's sponsoring like crazy. She's got 7,400 points on her first level. Again, real accounts, okay? Now, those people on the first level do work and she gets paid for it. Second level does work, she gets paid for it. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, counts toward her title and toward her pay, right? Even though she doesn't have anything on eight, she will someday, okay? And she will get paid on that also. But I want you to think of the, the return on every hour Dorothy gets invested in her business compared to the return on the effort or time that Luke might put into his business. Whose group do you want to be? What leader, the, which organization do you want to be the leader of? Luke or Dorothy? Who's going to grow faster? Yeah, Dorothy. Dorothy hands down exponentially, okay? Can you imagine what's gonna happen when everybody on her level two, four, five gets like exploding and, and her levels six, seven, and eight fill out? I mean, she's ambassador for sure, right? I mean, you look at this, she doesn't even have volume on level eight and she's at 70,000 points. The lady's on fire, okay? Um, and and again, it's it's all based on what you do and how you do it and where your focus is. That's why I wanted Steve to talk about you guys being the CEO of your organization because you are, and how are you leading? How are you leading your organization, okay? Because the results, the organization will show what you're doing well and what, you're, what, you're, what you need to improve on, okay? And the best thing, all, best thing of all, this is the coolest thing ever, is if it doesn't matter what the past is, right? I know Luke, I told you I know who this is, okay? And let me, let me tell you a little quick story. You can see the date on this is 2016, okay? Luke called me time and time and time again because he was not happy with, with how his group was doing. He wasn't happy with the direction. And I told Luke time and time and time again, Luke, you've got a sponsor. You're spending your time doing all kinds of other things. You've got to sponsor. You've got to develop leadership in your first level and have that duplicated in your second your one through four needs to be strong and grow. And after about a year, year and a half of not listening, Luke was so frustrated that he wasn't growing and keeping up with the company that he decided that he would do that. And so he started spending time every day building his business, not everybody else's, 
his business. He talked to new people, he sponsored, he developed new leaders, okay? And today, Luke's organization is healthy and strong. Luke's organization uh, is, is a healthy, profitable, growing organization because Luke stepped back and said, I've got to, I've got to change. I've got to do things different if I want my group to grow and I want the, the end result to be different, and he did. So I love that. And I, and I chose Luke on purpose because I, know, I want you to know that even if your group looks more like Luke than Dorothy, you can turn it around. You just have to go back to organizing your day and making sure that you're putting your time every day into the important things of your organization before you let the day fill up with other things, okay? Luke did that and, and it's a huge blessing. Now, I'm gonna skip these, but this basically shows again um, the numbers of people sponsoring in Luke's organization, okay? And, and this is volume actually, but um, you can see 88,000, that sounds like a lot, but not everybody goes out and sponsors like they should. So I always say it's about 10%. 10% of the people do what they should. So Luke in a year grows 8,880 points. Um, but Dorothy, even at 10% grew 82,000 because she's got so many more levels of duplication going on in her organization than Luke, okay? And let me go back, okay. So again, because there's so few levels that are duplicating in Luke's, he literally can't reach the numbers that Dorothy can, okay? 8,800, 82,000. Again, I think we all wanna be Dorothy. Build a strong top level in your organization. It will benefit you day after day after day for the rest of your life, okay? That's the moral of that quick story. Now, I always show people this because not that we can put it on the on a on a on Facebook or anything, but because it teaches you again a principle of our of our comp plan. I always look at this. This is if if you develop three people who sponsored every single month and each of them sponsored three people every month who sponsored, then then the numbers go down on the left there. But what you would earn off of all those people doing perfect little um, sponsoring and volume shows on the right. So if, if you sponsor three, who sponsor three, who sponsor three, and everybody ordered 120 points, you'd make $49,000 a month. Okay. And I can't see you. I've minimized you so I can see what I'm talking about. But who thinks that $49,000 a month would be a great number to me to get every single month? Would you think that's great? I would be happy. Okay. Well, it's actually a terrible number because if you did just a little bit more if you taught, if you sponsored five people and taught them to each do the same thing, and they each brought in five people who ordered 120 PV every month, you'd make 2.4 million. This is just unilevel. This isn't executive bonuses and everything else. Okay. This is just unilevel. Now, you guys can see why we don't put this online. 2.4 million, you can't go right. out and say. But if only 10% of the people, back to my principle, did what they were supposed to do, you'd still be at $244,000. Is 244,000 way better than 49,000? Pretty much. Yes, it is. Okay. And you guys, our top check right now is, is about $170,000 a month. I will not go out on a limb. I'll just tell you straight. We're going to have people making $244,000 a month. Okay. And the reason they're going to do that and the way they're going to do that is because they understand this principle. If I just build a little skinny group, I can make some money. But if I build additional leaders on my first and second level, my income goes up exponentially. All they did was, was sponsor two more leaders and their check didn't go up one or two times, okay? It went up multiples. It went up multiples because each new leader that you develop in your organization has the ability to increase your income exponentially. Okay, so when we, when we teach what we teach, it's because we know this. I, I know these numbers. I know what our PAM plays. I know how our PAM, our plan pays, okay? And so when we're teaching this, it's because we know this and we want you to maximize what you make. We want you to build the biggest group possible. I would love somebody someday to be a double platinum ambassador. That would make me happy as can be. You know how much money a double platinum ambassador would make? I have no idea, but it would be a heck of a lot, <laughs> Okay. And, and I hope, I sincerely hope a lot of people do that. Okay. 
So I show you these numbers again to help you understand that width is power in our, in our pay plan. Width has the ability to increase your income exponentially over time. Okay. So, so again, just understand, don't worry about the numbers. Just understand what I'm saying that, that consistent effort, te learning how to teach other people how to be successful and develop them into leaders and doing it over and over and over again will pay you back umpteen times more than if you just think you're a product coach or just think that, well, I'm making 10,000 a month now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna retire, I'm gonna have, go have fun now, okay? Because you are robbing people of the ability to become like you if you do that. I, I, I just think that's the worst thing we could do, okay? We have so many people that need help. We have such a good plan, good products, everything. We should be out helping as many people as possible and figuring out how to do it we can. So next thing I want to talk about is, is product habit or productive habits of highly effective distributors. Now, one of the things that we know as a, as an organization is that, that your ability to grow or the speed at which you grow is in large part based on how many new people you bring in. Now there's, there's a couple of things that play. You still have to, you know, you can sponsor a lot of people, but if you don't, if you're not good at duplication, you're not good at leadership development, you're still going to struggle. Okay. But it, but those things, things we can learn, but I know that everything else, the same people who bring in at least five new distributors a month grow faster than people who don't. We have, we have looked at tons and tons of accounts and this is something that we know. Okay. So again, as you, as you come out of today and as you go back and say, okay, what are my goals? I want you to know that this is a true principle, okay? This is something that we know as a company and I wanna pass it on to you so that as you set your goals, um, um, this is in your head. Now, if you're above five, if you're at 10, 15, which a lot of people are, then you're growing even faster, right? Um, but, but this is principle number one. Number two, okay, I'm gonna skip this, but yeah, you sponsor more people if you uh, do that. Number two, is that by doing that, you actually build health high up in your organization, okay? Now, before IT could figure these numbers out, back in the day uh, that Stan remembers, uh, back in our early days, um, as I watched people grow, I had an idea of how many new stars they had to have in their first four levels uh, to, to grow. And like I said, I had leaders calling me saying I had you know 6,000 new, new starts in my organization, and I'd look at their account and they're an executive and they have 30 new starts in their organization in the first four levels. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, you know, we've, we've got to talk because this, this account's in trouble. Um, and then when, when we were able to have, have IT go through every single person at every single level, see who grew, who didn't, and, and track it all, we found out that we were almost exactly spot on for all these numbers. And so here, here's the principle here, you guys, is if you're, if you're a silver manager, and you say, how hey, I want to get to silver director. How do I get to silver director? Obviously I got to talk to people and I got to train and help people duplicate and everything. But how, what do I need to do to get to silver director? The easiest thing that you can do is make sure that you talk to enough people every, every day that, that you can develop enough interested people in your organization throughout the month and help them duplicate, right? To grow your, your one through four new starts in your organization and let's say if you're at silver manager and you're at 15 and you want to go to silver director, if you can grow the one through four new starts in your organization to 40 or above, then in the coming months, you're going to be a silver director. Now, Mark, how do you know this? Well, because I've looked at hundreds and hundreds of accounts. I've looked at people who tell me they want to grow and I look at their one through four and they're really small and they don't grow. I've looked at accounts who tell me I really want to grow and, and I look at their one through four new starts and their personal sponsoring and those are high and I see that account grow, okay? Now, it's not like I'm silver manager, I get my one through four to 40 and I'm going to hit silver director the next month. All that does is give you the direction, okay? That gives you the direction of your company. Now, conversely, I have called silver executives, okay? And said, okay, I was going through your account the last couple of months and you're, you know, 40 to 60 new starts in your one through four. What, what can I do to help you? Because to me, that tells me that silver director is going to, I mean, that silver executive is going to 
gold director, silver director over time, right? Not again, not immediately, but over time that, that direction's down or over time that direction's up. And I, I talk to that leader accordingly, okay? So again, not, that, not the next month, but it'll be coming. To give you some, some examples, I have talked to silver and gold managers who were at 40 or 60 new starts in their first four levels. And I'm like, dude, congratulations, not only I'm hitting platinum manager, but I'm hitting director. And they're like, no, 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 Mark, I'm not, I'm not director yet. I'm like, no, but you will be, okay? I've talked to executives who I looked at their group and they had 300 new starts in their first four levels. And I told her, I was like, congratulations on hitting exe on uh, executive, but also congratulations on hitting silver executive. She's like, Mark, no, I'm not, I just hit executive for the first time. I'm not silver. I'm like, no, but you will be. And sure enough, two months later, she was a silver. A month after that, she was gold. Okay. Because she had so much energy and so much happening high up in her organization that how do you not do this, right? How do you not grow if you've built that much energy and excitement and duplication high up in your organization? You're doing this if you've done that. So if you're looking at something or you wanna grow or you're, you're bugged because you're not growing, look at your personal sponsoring. Is that five or more every single month? Are you, are you, are you focused on teaching those people to duplicate, helping those people to duplicate? Okay, and we're going to go through a little bit more of things that you can track here in just a minute. But, but I promise you that as you do that and as you put that focus there and as you spend time every day building your business, not somebody else's, your business is personal sponsoring, right? New starts on level one and level two and duplication on those exact same um, levels. That's your business. If you will spend time every day building your business, make sure that amidst everything else that's going on, you're doing that then you'll see the rest come over time, okay? So that's that. Um, everybody says they put effort into their organization. Everybody works, but, but the work that you're putting in, are you putting productive effort in? Are you putting effort in that's gonna get results? Um, and I'm not trying to rip on face to Facebook, but are you, are you just spending every day, all day only on Facebook? Are you just spending every day, all day, just talking to, other leaders or people down on your fifth, sixth, seventh level. Not that you shouldn't do that. But is that all you're doing? Because if that's all you're doing, you're, you're, I think, shortchanging yourself. Okay. Spend time every day meeting new people. Make sure that when you go to the store, gas station, uh, out to eat, you're talking to people, not trying to sell them, but getting to know them and getting their uh, contact information. Uh, again, one of the blessings I have is to be able to travel with a lot of our leaders and from airline stewardesses to servers at restaurants to people that are checking us in at a hotel, they get, they've worked so hard to get really good at just talking to people. Hey, how you doing? You know, wow, you're working the, the, the late shift. This is 11 PM, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a student in the day and I, and I do this at night and you know, what, what are you studying? Oh, I'm going to law school. Whoa. You're going to law school and then, and then work at nights. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. You know, I, I help people be successful and I, I help people, uh, grow organizations that, that pay, pay them. And I'd love to share you some information. What's your, what's your cell phone number? I'll, I'll text you tomorrow. And all of a sudden that person's given the leader their cell phone number. And I'm like, holy cow, all we were doing was checking into a hotel. Right. And now you have this, this lady's cell phone number and you're going to send her information tomorrow. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, they've, they've worked at it to make it so easy that they can just talk to anybody and not in a non-threatening or a threatening way. Hey, you know, you need to lose 20 pounds and I've got products that can help you. No, 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 nothing about the business. It's just, wow, that you're amazing going to law school in the day and working all night and holy cow, I'll bet you're tired. I'll bet you uh, need some energy and letting, you know, I got some stuff that can help you, but it's late. You know, just give me your cell phone number. I'll text you tomorrow. Boom, done. Okay. So again, those little tiny changes, those little additions into what we do every day make all the difference because that is productive effort. Now, second thing on this slide all of us come to this with strengths and weaknesses. All of us come to this with things that we do well and not. But, and we can learn. We're all blessed that we can learn. But one of the cool things is that consistency, that consistency every day will overcome almost any shortcoming any one of us have. Okay. If I, if I'm very sporadic in talking to people and building my business, I'm going to lose and not develop certain skills. But if I do it every day, I'm going to get really, really good at it. 
Okay, I'll get so good at it that maybe some of my shortcomings are overcome by how good I am, right? So I want you to remember that too, that, that that consistency every day is powerful because it allows us to oh, overcome some of our other shortcomings. Um, okay, so our goal, Steve kind of put something like this up and I, I was laughing because this is my version, but our goal is to talk to, to enough people every day that you can sponsor and motivate at least five people a month. And again, if you're doing more, phenomenal. So that you can find the leaders, because again, you're just sifting, okay? We're, we're not here to help everybody be successful. We're here to find the people that are self-motivated enough to go out and do what we ask them to do, right? So we're just sifters. All we do is sift. And if I got a good one, good. Let me let me do this, do this, do this, and I'll help you along. If they're if they're not motivated, it's not my job to save them. It's not my job to oh if if I help get them to director or platinum director, maybe they can see what I see. No, huh? they won't. They'll be mad when you quit helping them, no matter what level they're at. So why waste your time? Okay. Our job is to help the people that want to help themselves. The rest of them, I don't care how talented they are. I don't care how potentially great they are. All I want is their contacts. And then when they're ready, they'll come back. And it might be never, but next week, next month, we have a lot of people who join the company four or five years after somebody talked to them because they're like, okay, I'm in the exact same place I was. And that person's in the Mediterranean or... Dubai or wherever, and I'm done, right? So then they call them up and say, hey, what are you doing? I'm finally ready. So again, we're sifters, don't, don't ever forget that. You wanna find the leaders that can help you build the top four level of your organization so you can have the strongest, most profitable business possible, okay? That's our goal, <coughs> sorry. Um, next thing, it's all about the simple systems and Steve talked about this, okay? Don't do what works for you, to Stan's point. Stan knows a lot about products and ingredients, okay? Something that's really easy to him, he might be tempted to try, but if it's not easy for a new person, if Stan sponsored me and he's spewing all this product and ingredient information at me and I'm like, what the heck? All I'm thinking in my head is I could never do that. I'm not as smart as Stan, I can never do this, right? So I'm telling myself I can't do this business. But if Stan has worked really hard to make it really, really simple, kindergarten simple, like Steve talked about, and he's talking to me and he's Mark, all you got to do is, you know, here's the boards and you just do this and this and send this text and this is all you say, <coughs> excuse me, then I'm looking at Stan thinking, I can do this, right? I'm smart enough. I have the time. I can do this. And, and, and you guys never forget that's our goal, okay? You want to focus on the activities that, that will get a new person to share. That is what is important to you. Not that they do the eight day, not that they do whatever, but that they share, right? And I'm going to go into some numbers that prove this, but I'm not here to help one person lose weight. I'm here to help thousands. The only way we can do that is teach people how to share, right? It's not about what I can do. It's about what I can teach other people to do. So you got you to gotta make sure that you're in your head, your job is to teach other people how to do what you do. That's our job, okay? If we do that and we make it simple, uh, we're going to grow. And I'm going to totally skip auto ship when we get to that part. So don't worry about it. Um, always remember that people duplicate you. And are you doing the things that are going to make those new people successful? Or are you doing the things that are gonna that make gonna make them think this is too hard, this takes too much time, I can never do that, right? Now I want to tell you a really quick story because I'm almost out of time. I knew a guy one time in a company that I worked with who was making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a month. Okay, a month, every single month, he made two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, now you'd think that this guy would drive the latest sports car, have suits from Italy, you know, perfect looking, blah, 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 blah. No, this guy drove a dirty white Jeep and it was always dirty. I don't care if it was July or December, the Jeep was always dirty. He wore just Levi's, these kind of cream, thanks babe, cream hiking boots, um, some shirt and, and a jacket. And he had a comb over that was phenomenal. It was literally phenomenal. It was so high. And, um, I always laughed at him and I was like, man, why doesn't he, you know, do it differently than that, right? And then I actually was able to go to a meeting with him 
and he got up in the front of the room and he did okay, but he wasn't good. He wasn't great. And I, I was in the back of the room going, God, he, he's been doing this for like eight years. He should be way better than this. Right. And so I, I was just back there going, huh, I would have expected more. Well, uh, a couple months later, I had to run to his house. He lived locally. I had to run to his house to take in some information. And so I, I drove up and, and he lived kind of on a hill and there's this, this driveway up to the hill, but I didn't know it was at the top of the hill. I didn't know how his garage was or anything. So I, I parked at the bottom of the hill so I wouldn't block everything. And I walked past these guys working in the yard in this rusty white van. And, and I you know thought it was their van. I walk up the hill to his house, knock on the door. And uh, he answers and he's like, hey, um, he said, I need, let me grab some stuff. I actually have to go to the office, um, but I want to talk to you. So you just ride to the office with me and then I'll bring you back and you can take your car. I'm like, okay, whatever. So he goes in and he grabs his stuff and there's one of his kids playing the piano with their teacher right there and everything. And, and so he comes out and, and I'm thinking we're going to go get in his Jeep or whatever car he has in the garage. And he's like, hey, I want you to drive me. So I'm like, okay. So we walk back down the hill to where my car was, right? Um, actually, he didn't say that, sorry. He said, let's go to the office. So he <coughs> bypasses the garage. Sorry, guys. He bypasses the garage. So now in my head, I think I'm driving. So we walk down the hill and I'm again, thinking I'm driving and he goes and he gets in the yard. And I'm standing there like a little shocked that he's getting in the yard guy's van. And he goes, we'll get in. And I'm like, okay. So I hop in the van. I'm like, a little scared. I'm like, this is yours. And he goes, it's my church car. And I'm like, what? And he goes, it's my church car. And I'm like, what do you mean it's your church car? You know, I thought it was the yard guys. He's like, no, 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 this is our church car. And um, I, I was stumped, church car, what? And he said, Mark, he said, you know, I have 10 kids. I go, yeah, I know you have 10 kids. And he said, and we make a lot of money. And I'm like, yeah, I know you, I know that too, you know? And he said, well, he said, I don't want my kids to ever think that they're above anybody else. And he goes, this is our church car. It's the biggest piece of crap van I could find. And he said, every Sunday, my kids, including the teenagers, don't get to drive themselves to church. We go to church as a family. And he said, if getting 10, people, 10 kids ready, you're always late or you're barely, barely on time. We get there about when it starts. He said, so every Sunday I'm in a hurry and I go flying down the road and I squeal into the church parking lot, making as much commotion as I can. And I wheel into some parking spot and he goes, and then every one of my kids has to get out of this piece of crap van in front of all their peers and everybody else that they know. And he goes, he goes, my kids will not get by on what they drive. They're just like everybody else. And I was like, wow, I was blown away. That is brilliant, right? I was so impressed. And um, then as I, as I was talking to him at another time, he knew I had seen that one presentation. He said, so how do you think, what'd you think? And I was like, oh, you know, it was all right. I'm trying to be nice. And he's like, Mark, come on, what did you think? And I'm like, well, it was okay, you know? And so he looked at me and he goes, Mark, he goes, do you know what my job is? And I said, well, you know, sell as much product as possible, help as many people as possible. And he goes, no, when I'm doing a meeting, my job is to get up and, and do an okay job of explaining what's going on. But he goes, my job is to make every single person in that room look at me and think if he's making 250000 a month, I'm going to make a million, right? That was his job. And he understood his job. His job wasn't to get up there and tell everybody what he knew after eight years in network marketing and tell everybody what he knew about the product. His job was to paint the picture, but then help them understand that, wow, I can be not only as good as that guy, I can be better. Okay. He understood that people are going to duplicate you. And he didn't want to seem like I'm so good and I'm so polished and I'm so amazing that you can never be me. Okay. He wanted them to be successful. He wanted them to think that they could do it. And he structured everything to make sure that that was the way that he, he did things from his personal life to what he drove to um, how he handled his kids. Okay. He wanted to do things the right way. Always make sure that you're doing things in a way that are going to make your new people think I can do that. I can be like you. I can duplicate that. Right. Our tendency is to make it harder and, and more complicated to cover more bases. Nope, they're brand spanking new. They don't know what the heck they're doing. They've got to believe they can do it. They've got to um, think they have the time. And we, 
as leaders have to make sure that that is the, the picture we're painting and that's the duplication that we're doing. Number two, use tools, okay? Your most precious resource is your time. You can't get any more of it, okay? So if your day is full of things that really aren't gonna help as many people as possible, then you're, you're robbing everybody else of the ability to be like you. So make sure you guard your time and that you only invest in people who have earned the right to have some of your time. So again, if Stan sponsored me and he's like, Mark, you know, you need to watch this video or whatever, I'm just making stuff up. Mark, you need to watch this video and, and I'm gonna call you tonight, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you questions. And so Stan calls me tonight and I'm like, Stan, I, I didn't watch the video, you know, I'm, uh, I was on the phone and I had to watch, you know, the latest episode of whatever on TV and blah, blah, blah. And I never got around to it. Then Stan shouldn't take his time to tell me what I should have watched. Stan should say, okay, Mark, you know, watch that video tomorrow and I'll call you tomorrow. Now, if he calls me again and I still didn't watch it, maybe give me one more chance. And then Stan's going to tell me, Mark, I love you, but call me when you've watched the video. And then Stan goes to somebody else who maybe is more deserving his time because Mark sure as heck isn't, okay? Now, that will help you focus your time and attention on the people who are actually gonna do things. And if I'm the person you sponsored, when, when Stan tried to push me away because I haven't done what he asked, I'd go watch the stupid video because I'm not gonna get pushed out of the way, right? That's my personality. So, so but again, you're, you're leveraging your time and you're using tools to help you get more done. Last point on this, you guys, don't carry people. I talked about this before, but you are not responsible for someone's success, okay? They are. They get up in the morning, they get dressed, eat, they actually make food, go to and hold down a job, okay? They are, they are very capable of, of doing things themselves. And you thinking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry Mark and I'm going to show him how good this is and I'm going to build him to manager, platinum manager, director, so that he can see how cool this is, I'll tell you right now, you carry Mark to director and then you put me down because you you can't carry me anymore. And I won't be grateful that I'm the director. I'll be mad that you put me down. Okay, I'll be, why the heck did you put me down, right? So, so again, don't waste the time. Don't waste your precious time on people that aren't, aren't um, earning the right to have your time. Spend it on the people who are motivated enough to earn your time, okay? Now, Stan will remember this, maybe a few of the rest of you, Christy's way too young. Kiss is a rock band, okay? They're really good, and um, but they're not just a rock band, okay? That keep it simple, silly uh, was true 15, 20 years ago when I heard it, and it's still true, okay? Um, you gotta make sure that what you're doing is simple, okay? Again, they're looking at you. Can I do what you do? Can I, do I know enough? Do I have enough time? Am, am I good enough with people, right? You gotta, you gotta show them that they are. And when you're tempted to add steps, cause we all do it, I am terrible. Um, when we're tempted to add steps or things into that process because, well, you know, this one guy said this. And so I'm gonna add into the fast chat, this whole paragraph so that any, nobody else have that question. No, heck no. All you're showing people is it's harder. Don't worry about it, okay? Keep it duplicatable, keep it very, very easy and you guys will do it, okay? Our goal again, my goal is not to help one person. My goal is to help thousands of people. The only way we can do it is develop as many leaders as we can. Now, these numbers are exciting to me and they prove the benefit of simplicity, okay? Now, I don't know how big this is on your phone or your computer, but if you go back to November of 2018, um, and you can see that line, it says, uh, what, 29 days, 29.69. That is the days it took a brand new person to enroll somebody else back in October, November of 2018. Now, November 2018, for those, those of you that weren't around back then, we did everything manually. We had no tools. All of our leaders were on the phone every day, all day, explaining products, explain, explaining comp plan, explaining everything. We thought we had to be product experts. We thought we had to know how our products were going to impact every single body, blah, 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 blah. And it was really, really hard. And at that point, we were proving to people that you had to be really smart or super, super motivated before you could ever do this. Okay. And because of that, it took 29 days for a new person that signed up to sponsor somebody else. Now, 
We got smart. We simplified, 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 move all the way down to December of 2020. 2.52 days for a brand new person to share. 2.52 days from 29. What leader do you want to be? You want to be the leader over the group that takes 29 days before your brand new people feel they're smart enough and good enough to share? Or do you want to be the leader over the group that it takes two and a half days for a new person to think, oh, I get this. I can share now. Okay. Can you think how fast the duplication's going on that two and a half day group versus the 29 day group? Okay. We want to be the two and a half day group. So again, when you're tempted to make it complicated, don't run away. Okay. Run, run far away. We're here to make it easier. This is quick start. Back in November of 2018, it took 15.89 days for a new person to get their quick start. Now it's gone up and down, but now it takes 13.78 days. So we still gained a couple. Okay. We gained three days. Um, we're still working on this, but you can see again, that simplification has actually helped. And uh, trust me with boards, this is going to be going down even more. This is obviously December, but uh, as we start looking in June, July and, and look back over the history, you're going to see that number go down. Days to manager. I love this one. November, 2018. It took 97.95 days for a new person to hit manager. Three months. Okay, we were so complicated and hard. It took three months for a new person to hit manager. A month to before they talked to anybody and two months to build, okay? December, 2020, it took 20 days for a new person to hit manager. This is average on the average, okay? Now, do you want three months for a new person to hit manager or do you want 20 days? Again, can you see how simplicity just makes things happen so much faster? New people come in, yeah, I can do this. I'm sharing in two and a half days. Boom, in 13 days, I'm getting my quick start and in 20 days, I'm manager. That's perfect to me, I love this, okay? And again, these numbers prove that from complicated to simple, pays dividends on dividends on dividends. That's why I'm showing these numbers. We're skipping auto ship. You guys all know auto ship's great. Please do it. It'll pay you back every single day. There's my, there's my spiel on auto ship. Um, for those of you that have big groups, I hope that every three months you go back and say, hey guys, all you new people that signed up from the 15th to the 30th, move your auto ship up. It'll pay you back. Your group will go faster if you do that. Everybody who, uh, who doesn't, their group's going to grow slower. I'll just tell you now. I want to talk about five more things. I'm sorry, Stan, I'm going a little over. We'll, we'll hustle through this. This is good. I want you to know, again, the things that increase retention. Why do we talk about specific steps for a new person that comes into this organization? Okay. Well, number one, if a distributor just signs up with Singular and they don't get on subscription or anything, okay, they stay with us about two and a half months. This is a new distributor, not member. They stay with us about two and a half months. Now, if they set up a subscription order, then they stay an average of it's about three and a half to four months, almost twice as long. All they did was set up a subscription and they stay twice as long, okay? Can you see the importance of subscription? Getting people on subscription gives them more time to build their business. The more time they stay with us, the more, more opportunity they have to product story, the more opportunity they have to hear somebody else tell them something that motivates them, the more opportunity they have to sponsor their first person, right? The longer we can keep them with us, the more chance they have to see success. That's the whole point with these things. Now, a distributor who receives a check from Singular in their first 30 days will stay with us an average of seven months. Okay, this is one check. This is not quick start, one check. All I did was sponsor one person and I'm staying seven months. Can you see why we focus so much on making it simple so that new people will share? Because once they share and get somebody to sign up, holy cow, we just made it so that they're going to see all kinds of success with our company rather than drop out. Okay. One, they shared with one person. They got one check. They're going to stay with us seven months now on average. Love this. Love this. If, if somebody sponsors three more people so they get their quick start, they're going to stay with us an average of eight months. Now, I thought this would be a lot more, but in thinking about it, if I get one check, Again, just me personally, I'm going to go to share with a couple of other people so I can get my quick start, right? So I'll stay longer, right? But at, at the one checkpoint, I've already kind of decided I'm going to share. I've already taken that leap. So, okay, that makes sense to me. Um, 
if they sponsor six or more, they actually stay longer. Don't know why, but I think it's related to this. If they hit manager, they stay with us an average of 19 months. Okay. If they hit manager. So again, I want you to think this through, get them in, get them using the product, get them sharing, right? Show them how easy it is. So they sponsor one person, quick start manager, boom. You just went from two and a half months to 19 months that they stay with us. All right. Who's going to see the more success? Two and a half months or 19 months distributor? What leader is going to see the most, most growth? The leader whose people stay an average of two and a half months or the leader whose people stay an average of 19? Can you see why those steps are so important and why the simplicity so that people feel they can do this is so important? Now, just another little side note at the bottom there. Just so you know, back four years ago, November 2018, the average length the manager stayed active with us was eight to 10 months. How did it double? How did we go from eight to 10 months as a manager to 19? Okay, again, you guys, it's simplicity. If, if I'm a new manager and this is hard, then I'll think about leaving. But if I'm a new manager and this is easy, I'll stick around, right? So again, that simplicity, you guys, I, I hope I've showed you enough and hit this enough. So, so critical to your success, but also that walking people down the path. We know these numbers, they don't, they're brand new. So my goal is to help them hit every one of these things in a very simple, easy manner so that, so that they can see that growth. We're doing some promos now that just should light a fire under you as far as helping new people because we can give them more than we've ever given them before, both as they hit their quick start and as they hit manager. I love this. This is the coolest thing ever. And I hope that you use that and think about the things we talked about today to help you move those people, okay? Simpli simplicity with a focus on duplication is the key, right? And again, it's it's hard because we want a product coach and we want we want to help all these people but I only have so much time in the day. No, no. What I really want to do, what I really want to do is talk to as many people as I can every day and then find out which one of them are motivated and going to do the things that I ask them to do. And they go out and they, they use the product, right? Post, blah, blah, blah. And, and so that that person is the one I focus on. The rest of them, I'll call you back. Okay. I love you, bud. Call you, call you when you're, you're ready to run right now. I've got a runner, right? Then we do it all again, then we do it all again. And by building that within your organization, you set yourself up to maximize what we can pay you every month. And you guys are gonna have a phenomenal organization. You're gonna have leaders that are blowing it out of the water because you've taught them the right way to do things. And you're gonna literally be able to fully take advantage of everything we offer from, yeah, products, but also the comp plan, passport program, everything that we have. So I hope that what Steve talked about, what I talked about today, Number one, expand your mind, expand your vision, but also help you understand that the, it's the little things done consistently that make the difference. And I, can, I gotta make sure those little things are right so that that consistency gets me where I wanna go and not where I don't wanna go. So anyway, I love the opportunity to talk to you guys. Thank you, Stan, so much for inviting me on. And uh, I'll turn it back over to Stan. Thank you so much. <clears throat> you know, I think we all needed this. Uh, so much of this we've learned from you in the very beginning, but we get um, we get lackadaisical or we try to tweak it and do it our way and we complicate things and to learn how to get our, say, ourselves out of the way and keep it so simple. Now we're starting to see really that exponential growth start to come into play. You see it with Christy. Uh, you see it with Gary, you see it with Brian and Carrie, you see it with everybody in our organization and you see it with the entire company. Now we're growing really fast. We're going to be big. And uh, I'd like to have you back on here at the beginning of May, Mark. So let's kind of like set a time and, and uh, uh, we'll get some people back on here before I let you go. I want to introduce you to the lady at the bottom of the screen. Her name is Kelly Larson. I just signed her up uh, a little over th a month ago now, and she's brought in a brought in one who brought in one, and so she is shooting for director so that she can go to Orlando. And 
we're putting a plan together, keeping it simple, duplicating it, and doing the, the, the TIPs or the PITs or the IPTs or whatever you want to call them. That's what we're doing. And so I just wanted to introduce you to her real quick. All right. Well, Kelly, congrats. And I look forward to seeing you in Orlando then. Hang on. I'm trying to unmute you. You got your phone on mute, I think. Okay. Oh, there you go. Hey, Kelly. Yeah, she's gone. She has her phone on mute. You have your phone on mute, hon. All right, I'll give you. I'll give you a call afterwards, Kelly. But thank you, Mark, so much. Uh, I know all of you guys up here on the screen, I want to thank you for being part of this. Uh, when we work together as a team, we can make things grow a lot faster than to try to do it by yourself. And I just personally want to thank each and every one of you, Brian, Carrie, Christy, Helen, uh, Nicole, Mike and Teresa, Gary, my man Gary and Kelly, thank you all. And uh, with that being said, uh, I'm glad this is recorded. There's some things I want to go back and look at again. Uh, I'll quit yapping and, and I'll, uh, I don't know how I unmute everybody. You might have to unmute your own and I'll let everybody give you a little. Thanks, Mark. Awesome. Really. Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. Very Thanks, much. Mark. It's amazing. Loved it. Thank you. Learned a awesome. lot. Good to see you. Thanks, Mark. Good seeing you again. Yep. Okay, you too. You Bye. guys take care. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 See you, everybody.